Welcome back to another Sons of the Forest building guide. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build a house in the sky, or as many houses as you want. You can also expand upon what I'm going to be showing you to build an even larger house in the sky. And we're going to be doing this with a minimal number of support beams. You'll be surprised at how little you'll see holding this building up. Now, the first thing that we have to deal with, the biggest problem with all this, is picking out the right area. Because... We're not going to have many support beams, and if cannibals attack them, the whole structure is going to go down. So there's a few options to alleviate this. The simplest is just to turn structure damage off, but if you're playing on a server, that may not necessarily be an option. The other option is to build in water. Now, one thing, one spot that I have that's very good for this is right here on the map. This has water that gets pretty deep but then stays shallow enough to build in for quite some distance. There's different parts of this that you can use at that have different depths and different heights and things. But the other big thing is, and this is something I'll be testing later in this video, this theory is that the AI's navigation mesh, for some reason, does not go into this water. So on top of the fact that cannibals normally drown, uh, they also tend to not want to go here. And again, I'll be testing this, but you can see Kelvin here. He refuses to go any further than that, even though the water's not even there yet, because the navigation mesh does not extend out into this water. So as long as we build our sky house over this shallow water, in theory, we should be all clear from cannibals. If you end up liking the video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more Sons of the Forest content, and let's go ahead and get right into this. The first thing that we need to do is determine the angle of our base. So the shore is angled like this. I'm going to try to keep it angled with the shore so that way the depth will be a little more consistent. So we're going to put a log down like this, and then we're going to try to square the grid off of that. Once you put down these first two logs, your grid is all set, and now you can start latching on other logs off of that grid, and we're going to build out a grid. Now, there are two ways to make what we're going to make. I'm going to be showing you one way, and in the future, I'll make another video showing you another way that we can do something similar, but in a totally different method. But for now, we'll just go ahead and lay down this grid. For this particular setup, we're going to need six logs in length, up to a maximum of six logs the other way. We'll just make a square for this. It's the maximum we can do per block but we could potentially do more than one block if we wanted to make a larger platform. But for now, we'll do a six by six. If you don't know the basics of water building on ocean water, it's going to be something like this. Once you get so deep, you'll have to lay these logs down and then lift them up. They may glitch out, in which case we'll have to do a special tech, which is as simple as connecting a nearby log and picking it back up. And then it'll let you do a second time. And the second time, it should actually put it on correctly. And then you'll be able to continue going until the water gets too deep. So now we've got the foundation laid out and we run into our first serious problem. We got a big problem here we gotta try to fix. You notice how uneven this is, how they're not all the same height? Well, there's something important to keep in mind when building a sky house in this particular kind of situation. You do not want them to be too deep of a change in height. So right now, I'm at the limit of what we can do. We have the full size logs over there and then from here we're already down half a log in length, which is okay. The only way we can fix this is to cut all these logs down to the lowest height, which is this. But they need to be at least half log in length afterwards. So those tallest ones will be half log in length and height, and that will make them the same as our lowest one. So there may be a way to work around this, but I just haven't had time to test what to do if it's really crazy different in height and still have the foundation that we want for our sky house. But I'm going to go ahead and cut all these logs down to the lowest height, make them even with this in order to level this out. Now, in this particular scenario, you might run to a problem where you can't cut these logs because they're already down in the water. So there are some options. You could try picking them up and redoing them with the correct height. Or additionally, you could try jamming some logs in here and standing on them and see if it'll let you do that and cut them, which is what I'm going to try to do. But one way or the other, you'll be able to eventually figure it out and level this thing off. After completing that task, the next thing that we need to do is we need to turn this entire grid into a ladder. So we got to add in every single connecting piece. Now that we have the grid filled out, the other thing that we're going to do is remove any supporting structures that we had temporarily put in. And then on the side that's easiest access or the side that's going to be facing your input of logs, you're going to start building um, a platform that you can use to walk up onto your grid. So that will be the access point we use to keep on going on this every level and keep expanding that as we go. 
And then other than that, you're just going to be bringing up logs, placing them down, and upping the grid level as high as you want your sky home to be. I got the initial foundation done, but now we run into the serious problem that we need to deal with. So you may have recalled me saying something about there's not really going to be any supports and that's true so you might be wondering why did we have to build a lattice the whole way up like this well the reason for that is because it's the only way i'm aware of that we will be able to build on the top so now what we have to do is the painstaking process of inserting struts all around the outsides and then starting to remove the pieces now, if we do this right, we'll only need, I think, two layers of logs like this, and then the rest underneath will be removable. But it gets a little more complicated than that. Uh, There's actually going to be a little bit more to it if it's anything like the last time I played with this. The last time I played with this stuff, there's like a method at certain points about removing stuff that I'll have to show you. But for now, I'm going to instru insert struts on all the corners. And I'm also going to insert them on the lefts and the rights of all the things. We don't need them on the middle areas at all. We just need them on the outside pieces. So upon further examination, I just remembered these corner ones I don't think are necessary, but we'll leave them for the sake of that symmetrical look. Looks similar. I don't know. Uh, they're actually needed on the next one down. But for now, what we can do is we can go over here and we can lift this up and we can get to work by pulling out all these different pieces underneath. You know, the really nice thing about building this over water is if you fall, you don't necessarily die. Anyway, save often. So the next step that we're going to do here is we're going to get back out of here and now we're going to lift up another layer of these logs. This will let us get down to this layer and we'll probably want to do this corner first just so it's easier to walk into here for now. And we're going to have to slip through the grid like this or build planks to do it more safely. And we need to get to each corner. And once you put the last pieces on the last corner like this, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll let you remove these. Now, if it doesn't, that's where things start to get a little weird. When it won't let you remove the supports, you've just got to play around with different ones until it lets you remove them. Sometimes there'll be a weird order to what you have to remove. But we're actually going to remove not just the outside. But at this point, we should be able to literally remove everything from this second layer down. So once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now we're good to go. But before we can tear everything down, we're going to have to put the logs back onto this ramp. And then we're going to have to... Um, get back up there so that we can make some kind of way to access it because right now we don't have any way to get back up there once we tear down I don't want it to rebuild this so let's just build a rope bridge which I think will be the final product anyway We'll just connect the rope bridge in right there at the center And then we'll build something down here to connect it to and make a quick rope bridge So we can go up and down whenever we want and then we'll tear down before you make that rope bridge though Big thing you need to think about if you want it to be symmetrical, then just make a single line out from your grid so that way you can keep it as a grid. And then you can build the rope bridge where it'll be perfectly symmetrically, just perfectly symmetrical and not be like weird and twisted. So that's something you definitely want to consider if you like having things perfectly symmetrical. So now we're going to connect the rope bridge from up here all the way down there. And unfortunately, we have a problem. The rope isn't quite long enough. I'm going to, have to move this forward one or two squares or move it forward a square and up a square. With some adjustments, now we can add in the rope bridge like that, add on all the planks, and now the rope bridge is done. With this complete, now we can actually start the teardown montage. Well, the house is done at least the foundation is and we had to leave these because for whatever reason the way it works when you're trying to do this on all sides like this in order to make it this wide we had to leave these things in which is fine as long as i make them symmetrical they didn't have to be symmetrical but it looks a lot better symmetrically so that leaves us with with the task 
of putting on the floor up here. So I'm going to go ahead and tack down the floor real fast. Then we need to get started on this house. So I've got an interesting idea for this house. So there's like no way to really make a symmetrical roof. But I was thinking about making an entrance that's inset some from the rest of the house. So you'll come in here and there'll be a door right here. But I also really want a balcony on the back so we can actually see out onto the ocean. So I'm going to just create an entrance here and create some housing around the sides. So we can have a balcony in the front and we can also have a balcony in the back. By the way, it's time for that test I talked about. Can the cannibals actually go in the water or is their navigation mesh stuck at the shore? Well, it looks to me like their navigation mesh does in fact end at the shore, just like Kelvin and also Virginia. So basically, if you just build over this water at all, I think you're pretty much safe from cannibals. There's one exception. If they're trying to attack you, their animations will force them out of their navigation mesh. But once you walk away from them, they won't be able to go any further or get towards your house. So. The only way they can attack your house is if you try to make them attack your house once it's out here. I just finished the house and it's time for the grand reveal. So this is what I came up with. So we have a symmetrical house. Let me get a view up here of the ceiling. I wanted to put another roof that went forward to back in the middle, but because of the new addition of these angled like uh, triangle pieces, it actually messed that up and made that impossible on the back. So I wasn't able to do that, unfortunately. But it still came out pretty good. So we walk into here and we have a bed on the left and a bed on the right. I put these shelves here for some role play privacy, you know, for whoever's sleeping there. We have a little dining space over here and we have the hangout space over here around the bone lamp. We have good views out the windows of the oceans. We can see the bay from this side. We can see our ocean village we made in, the in a previous video over on that side. And over on this side, we can also see the ocean. Out from here, we can check out the forest in the front. If we go out the back, there's a balcony back here where you can get a really nice view of the ocean. And look at the sharks down. Look at that shark down there. Oh my goodness. Uh, and then we can also see the ocean base that I made, the ocean village. Uh, it's just a really nice view. This thing came out super nice. I am very, very happy with this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this, you know, helps you out in some way or just entertains you. And if it does and you want to support me, just hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more Sons of the Forest content, and also just leave a nice comment if you want. Just boost me in the algorithms. Also, if you want to help out and make my video discovered by more people, another thing you can do, which you should do anyway, is go to the description of this video and check out the other Sons of the Forest building guides I have for other crazy things like how I made that ocean village over there, for example. And just go click one from the description and go watch it. That also boosts me in the algorithm. It shows them that you're interested in my content and will show it to more people. But if you want me to make more content like this, just help me out, guys. Just give me a like, subscribe, do stuff like that. And then that will hopefully be able to justify me making more and more videos like this as time goes on. But this has been my sky house. How to make a sky house, an invulnerable sky house, I might add, uh, in Sons of the Forest.